Wow, we got into RuPaul, a place I didn't think we would go. And here we are. <laughs> so in moving out of this space of informing or, or thinking about love and loving ourselves and how that impacts our relationships, I'm curious about how navigating dating informs any of y'all's love relationships. And when we're talking love relationships, we mean platonic ones. I mean, I feel like my failures in dating make me appreciate my friendships so much more. Um, not like, I don't know, like, I feel like something that I have caught myself repeating to myself over and over again, over at this point, probably the past month, <laughs> um, is that I feel so honored to love and be loved by my friends. Um, I like I feel like that is like the highest form of love that I have experienced and sorry and um I I don't know like I feel like with my family it definitely feels like conditional love that's being um has on a mask that says hi I'm unconditional which like feels very frustrating and it feels like there's a certain level of love that's being promised that actually isn't present and that in itself is frustrating um, and then in romantic relationships, like there's just like a lot of things that I struggle with regarding like vulnerability and anxiety around those. And what I've noticed is that with like my friendships is that I often feel vulnerability like very quickly. And I've even noticed like relationships I've had that have ended and we've like truly become friends. It's like almost instantly like my vulnerability increases. I recognize <laughs> that's something I need to work through in therapy. I'm trying. <laughs> but um, at the end of the day, I mean, I think that like something about like the way that like friends choose one another is very affirming for me. Like, I know you don't have to be here, but you are. And for that, not only are you here, but you've stayed, especially like when friendships continue for years and years. There's like something so affirming about that. And like, as I've been like trying to work through the issues that I have with romantic vulnerability and therapy, something I constantly look towards is, okay, how is this vulnerability being cultivated in my platonic friendships? Um, to me, um, I, 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 I think, hey, dating and I feel like I made that clear with like me being on the verge of just giving up on everything and it's just like I don't have the patience and I don't have the capacity to just like aimlessly do this with random people that may or may not get me or whatever I just think my time is like that valuable but that being said like because of my few experiences dating they like regrettably so have jaded me and like how I love myself and how I show love to others to the point where I don't know how to be affectionate with uh, with my friends and even my partner sometimes. And it's like, how do I navigate the and heal that, I guess, trauma that came up from that dating experience into like, how do I show up for my friends and how do I love my friends in the way that I want to be loved and I want to be upheld and supported. Um, so for me, like dating is not something I'm a fan of. And I'm like through therapy realizing that because of that, I started embodying this attitude of like um, pessimism of like, of uh, what's the word of like, I hate everybody equally. And like, I'm never gonna have friends or like, also like having some like pretty traumatic friend breakups as well, which we don't talk enough about friend breakups either. And we should, that, that's an entirely new episode, but um, navigating that, that those experiences and like re acknowledging that you let yourself be jaded and that you may not know how to properly show love or affection to people you care about. But like now that I, I acknowledge that, how do I go back to that? 
source to that light that used to be before all this jadedness happened. That, that resonates with me so much. I'm, I'm thinking about, this question is actually really hard for me to answer or even consider because so many of my, back when I was like a baby queer, so many of my friendships were with um, other black cisset women. Um, and that's how they were identifying at the time. Um, and it was really, as being the only queer and out person in the friend group, I don't know how, I struggled with how to express um, love for my friends without them automatically assuming that I was interested in them um, as more than friends. And because of that, I created real hard boundaries and hard lines around um, romance and love um, and friendship. So I made a rule. I'm like, I do not date my friends because they, I, did, I didn't want there to be any uh, confusion around if I was attracted to them or not, um, X, Y, Z, uh, things that happen when you're the only queer person in a friend group, right? Everybody always thinks you're trying to get with them. Um, so now, move, like as I've progressed and shifted and as my relationships with my friends have shifted, I now have a lot more uh, friends that share my identities, uh, my gender identities, and my sexual orientation. Um, I think that I'm a beginner in learning how to love my friends in a different way. Um, I feel like I've traditionally shown love to my friends by way of listening and um, gift giving, um, but I find that some of my friends need love in different ways that I have not been able to access uh, just in my history of friendship. So I think in so many ways, I'm like learning how to be a loving friend. It's so funny because I just, I was just having a conversation with a good friend of mine. Um, she's also cishet. And we were talking about like the way that we love our friends because my, my friends have really become like the loves of my life. Like they show up for me, they ride, like, like we're in it together, regardless as to like, who's like popping in and out, like we're in it. And we have, and we're like, I'm glad that we're living in this time where like, we have no problem, like falling in love with each other. Like love is not like, you're not like, don't limit yourself to like just falling in love with someone that you're sleeping with or that you're dating or that you're trying, like fall in love with your friends. Like these are the people that are like with you like day in, day out. And um, we were talking about like that fear of like, oh, somebody, you know, people are gonna think we're coming on to them, whatever. And it's like, well, you know what? Think that because you should be so lucky. But the thing was like, <laughs> like you really should be so lucky. But it's like to have someone like really just like, lovingly embrace you and like like Rai was saying like share that vulnerability like that's sacred and it's not if we're waiting for like partners to love us in that way like we might be waiting forever because dating sucks so like love on your friends so yeah that's yeah I really resonated with what you said about being like having like ride or die friends like a lot of the friends I have I've been friends with since like middle school shockingly enough and like I consider them family like I'm an only child so growing up I relied on my friends a lot like I treated them like they were siblings like I got close to their families like I got close to like their siblings so like I love my friends and I do think that like being in a relationship has also made me like rethink not rethink but like just like reshape how I look at my friends. And like, I've met tons of new friends through Sebastian, like many of you guys. And so like, I definitely think that like, being in a relationship and being in a partnership with someone has really helped me define like what I look forward in friendships and also in my relationships. Like I remember like growing up and thinking like, shouldn't everyone be friends with their partner? Or like, I used to think like, like, should your partner be your best friend? Is that a thing or is that like weird? And I've talked to certain people who said that like their partner is definitely not their best friend. Like they don't like to think of them that way. But I, I, I don't know if it's like necessarily best friend but I do like to think of my partner as a friend. Like I mentioned earlier, like when I, when we moved in after three months I was like, well, like, yes, they're my partner but I still feel like we're friends. And so I feel like with that base level of friendship it makes me want to do and explore other 
aspects of our relationship versus like just being lovers. Does that make sense? I'd love to hear what you guys think. Yeah, it does make sense. Um, I, who I've actually, I remember one relationship I was in um, with a cishet black man and who so much about that relationship was wrong, but I feel like that was the only time where I thought, damn, like I can't actually talk to him the way that I talk to my friends. Like, this is not someone that I actually want to like have a healthy debate with or spar or just like talk about Real Housewives of Atlanta. Like he just wouldn't get it. And our interests were so different. And I kind of, I realized that outside of loving him, I didn't like him. And it didn't, it, I mean, the relationship was unsustainable. Like it, it didn't last, I think part, partly because without, without the romance, without the love, and most importantly, in that relationship without the sex, what were we? Like, damn near nothing. And uh, that's when I realized kind of the connection between, no, I don't think that you and your partner should be best friends, but I think there needs to be clear lines of communication and you should feel good when you're around this person, even just hanging out. Like, love is it's not enough in terms of sustaining a full life with someone like this has to be someone that you actually fuck with right oh, i'm sorry youtube someone that you actually care about and are invested in past the relationship i feel like with my partner now i'd be invested in her outside the relationship like if this were to end i'd want to see how she's doing months from now you know i want to see if she you know accomplished the goals she set for herself or whatever and vice versa and that that ground feels it feels like we're on steady ground with each other when you have a relationship um that's platonic outside of the love relationship yes yeah. i definitely feel that oh my bad no, you're good. You're good. That's my fault. But yeah, BC, I definitely like hear what you're saying. And I feel that like very heavily. And like for me, I kept going back and forth with this question. I was like, yeah, they 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 could be my best friend. Yeah, sure. I mean, huh? Wait, what? And it's because I'm like, I like I'm sure non-monogamy will come up. And I feel like that's also how I've been in terms of like my like best friendships. I remember like when I was younger, people at I say people at church it's not I don't think this is necessarily a church thing I just truly lived at the church people at my church would be so mad when I kept bringing friends to church and be like this is my best friend and it was like eight different people but I was like no I just like genuinely like love all of these people so intensely and they're like best means that there's one best and I was like but why <laughs> and I feel like that's kind of like informed like the way that I feel about like what like romantic relationships should look like um, and I know that like for me, I don't want my romantic relationships to be like in competition with my platonic friendships. I think that they're different relationships, but like I don't want to feel like I don't want to feel like my romantic relationships are just suddenly like so much more important than like my friendships, especially like friendships that have been around for like four plus years, you know. Yes, I definitely feel that. Okay, y'all. So I have a question. We've been talking about family and I mentioned like my grandparents and how they met, but I'm curious to know, like just in general, like how has your familial love, whether it's like your parents, grandparents, aunt, uncles, like how has your familial love and their relationships affected your dating life specifically? <laughs> the first thing I think about is I'm like the way, shared values are so important to me in any relationship and I've been like in um communication with like my mom's mom's side of the family way more since the pandemic we like get on zoom every Sunday and at one point it just got really stressful and I realized it was stressful every week I still get on I still like love them and like want to continue going but I've realized what makes it so hard is the fact that like we don't have shared values and neither of us are interested in shifting our values um regardless of what the other party has to say I'll admit I'm stubborn I'm a Taurus baby sun and mercury 
Um, and I'm right. <laughs> like my values are based in justice and liberation. So you're gonna say no to justice and liberation, VC? <laughs> um, and like, I just, I'm not gonna be wavering on that. And I, they're very much so a big part of like who I am as a person. It's not just my values. Like they're very much so aligned with like who I am and like the things that I care about and like what my day-to-day -day lo life looks like and even how I build out my relationships. And honestly, yeah, I feel like that's the main thing I've learned from the relationships that I have with my family is like, I, I don't know if that's exactly what you asked, but that's the first thing that came to mind. It's like the relationship I have with them makes me realize that that's not what I want to see replicated in my romantic relationships. Like, I don't want to see myself rolling my eyes and having to text my cousin to talk junk about the other cousin who's saying something goofy on the Zoom. Like, I don't want my romantic or my friendships to feel like that, you know? Um, I'll answer it even. Uh, so when I thought about this question, it got me thinking about like, just in general, like how my parents' relationship has affected me. Like my parents got divorced when I was two years old and they both remarried and they've been with their respective partners for a while now. And so like, I had to navigate that like my, like through high school, having like four different parents, inviting them to like, um, like different after school activities and just like holidays was crazy, having different households to go to and so, Sometimes I think about like whether or not, like I used to think like, oh, like divorce, like a lot, a lot of my friends' parents have gotten divorced. Like more parent, like more of my friends' parents than less have been divorced. And so like for a long time, I was kind of like, I wouldn't say bitter, but just like I wasn't sure if marriage was for me. Cause I was like, so many people I know have parents that are divorced, like a lot of them have had like tumultuous relationships with their parents and like their parents hate each other. And like, I actually grew up in a weird situation where my parents were still like cordial. My dad would come over, stay and drink, like, or have a drink with my stepdad and like talk about sport. And I'm just like, okay, this is weird. And so like, but seeing my parents still be cordial with each other, but yet still be divorced, it kind of just made me like rethink what dating relationships is and just like in general like even though they were able to separate and have new partners they were still able to come together for me and so that really shaped how I see like marriage even and just like in general being in a relationship I feel like I'm just basically a broken record talking about <laughs> my jadedness and my trauma but it also comes from my family of like I don't have the strongest relationship with my family because of like my queerness and identity and all that. And I think it um, involves like the trauma they instilled on me and just me becoming hyper aware of like cycles of oppression that they're stuck in and that they we're all as a family unit we're trapped in and um, we're maintaining systems of oppression but also not really doing anything to fix them. Um, and I think my parents got divorced when I was like six or seven. And then they were divorced or split up for a couple of years. And then somehow they got back together and then they had my brother and they, they remained together then. But then I'm like, okay, so I'm the only one out of my siblings who is unpacking trauma from coping with a divorce or not really knowing what understanding what was happening and like how is that gonna affect me and then just like they had my baby sister and like I think probably like six six years ago they got remarried and I like felt some type of way because I felt jaded I'm like they're only doing this for my siblings like I see pass through them they're only doing this to save face with the church and like doing it for the sake of my siblings and then um yeah so it's like through that I just like I have a, also have a lot of trust issues I have a lot of issues with like speaking up in relationships I like minimize myself and I'm like now I'm just like unpacking and doing the work to like dismantle everything that they like taught me or I grew up grew up with it's so interesting because I've grown up with these um like the black men the black cis head men in my family who 
who are like great individuals, right? And they have like these great stories and like have been like maybe even great fathers and great grandfathers. But when it comes to how they treat their partners, it's like a completely different person. It's, it's, it's just, there's just a lot of like tension there. Um, and yeah, like just going back to Rye's point about um, looking at your family and realizing how your family is, replicates all of the things that you don't want to bring into your life and the things that you don't want to continue. And while that's painful, I do, I on most days, I find such a healing opportunity in that because that means that like me and mine going forward, like we're gonna know how to do this like a different way. But like, yeah, and it's also like many of the things that um, my, like what Monique was saying of like, I am not gonna repeat that same mistake or I'm never going to be with someone like you because I love you, but I don't like the type of person you are. I feel like, and oftentimes in my relationships, I, say I don't ever want to be like you but yeah years later I am exhibiting the same thought pattern or behavior that they were doing and I'm like no I hate when my people say I'm like my dad and then I do something that reminds people of my dad and it's like oh, and it's like uh the worst and we like that's why our I have hope for our generation and particularly the alpha generation as BC finally taught us about that, you know, we are going to break cycles and like, we need to like, we're hyper aware of the systems of oppression that we're stuck in and perpetuating. And like, now is the time to stop them.